Here's a problem we have involving the dissociation of aluminum carbonate. Before we can do anything, we have to write and balance the chemical equation that describes the dissociation of this compound. So dissociation, don't forget, that means you're dissolving this compound in water. So we're not actually dis uh, involving water in our chemical equation. We're really just looking at the ions that are forming. So aluminum has a positive three charge. You know that from the periodic table. Also carbonate has a negative two charge. You know that from memorizing all of the charges of your polyatomic ions. Now, if it's something that you don't remember, you can always reverse crisscross. Remember, these two ions come together to form the aluminum carbonate, and their goal is to form a compound that has a neutral charge. And in order to do that, you would need two aluminum ions to pair with three carbonate ions. Um, and what we've commonly referred to it as crisscross. So aluminum gets the two, the carbonate gets the three, and that's how we get the aluminum carbonate, the Al2CO3 with a subscript of three. So now we have to balance before we can even start to answer any questions that are going on. On the left-hand side, we have two aluminum, so I'm going to put my coefficient of two over here. And on the left-hand side, we have three carbonates. Anytime you're balancing an equation that has a lot of compounds, don't worry about the individual carbon and oxygen. Just worry about that whole carbonate for now. So we have three carbonates on the other side. Now we're all balanced. We're ready to go. And the question is asking about how many moles of ions are produced by the dissociation of one mole of your Al2CO3-3. So let's say we do start off with one mole. We need to figure out how many moles of ions are produced. And a big factor is we got to look at those coefficients because that gives us the ratio in which they form. So this coefficient is one. And this means that for every one mole of aluminum carbonate, we will have two moles of aluminum ions form and three moles of carbonate ions form. Thankfully, in our original problem, we have one mole. It's asking us how many moles of ions are produced if we start off with one mole of this compound. So that means we would end up with two moles of our aluminum and we'll get three moles of our carbonate. And it's asking us the total, how many moles of ions. So the answer to the first part of this question is five moles. But I wanted to add the second part in there because there was some confusion when we had gone over it in some classes earlier asking about, well, can't you just add the coefficients right off the bat? Wouldn't that make more sense? Two plus three is five. And yeah, that works if your coefficient here is one and if the question is asking you to start off with one mole. Um, you could use stoichiometry to figure it out. It is a lot more time consuming. It is a lot more math. But try to think smart about this now. We're going to do the second part, which I just added in from the original question, asking about what if you started off with 0.5 moles originally? Don't forget, your equation, the coefficients in your equation, just represents the ratio between them. So we originally have, let's say we have one mole of aluminum carbonate and we end up with two moles of aluminum ions. Well, if we had half of that to start with, we should end up with half the amount of aluminum ions. That's going to be one mole. And it's the same thing with the carbonate. We started off with half the amount of aluminum ions. So we should end up with, I'm sorry, half the amount of aluminum carbonate we should end up with half the amount of carbonate ions. So that would be 1.5 moles. The question is asking how many moles total are produced. You add them up and that gives you 2.5 moles.